Hey, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here, and today is part two of our cholesterol series. Does a paleo diet raise your cholesterol? So the first question we have to ask, do we even have to be worried if our cholesterol is high? And the question is, maybe. There's a couple things we have to dig deeper on. We have to run some labs, look at some ratios, look at some markers to get a sense of, you know, are our cholesterol levels in a place where we may be in trouble? And most of the time, cholesterol is overhyped, in my opinion. Cholesterol is an important building block. It's an antioxidant. It's a major structural material for the brain. We need it for health. And the majority of cholesterol, as you see in part one of the video series, is primarily made by the liver. And we talk about what stimulates that. Low glucagon and high insulin will stimulate that. So eating cholesterol does not have much impact on your blood cholesterol levels. That's been echoed in the literature many, many times. But first off, if you want to get a sense of if you're, if you're in trouble at all with your cholesterol, let's first run your basic lipid panel. That's right here. Your basic lipid panel is going to consist of HDL, high density lipoproteins, LDL, low density lipoproteins, triglycerides, and then VLDL, or is your very low density lipoproteins. So first off, let's take a look and break down what these lipoproteins are. We have LDL. LDL carries the uh, cholesterol from the liver to the tissues. Now, why is that important? Well, we have to get the building blocks out to the peripheral tissues to make hormones, to help with inflammation, to help repair our body, to get it to the brain for healing and things. So this is like, consider it a bus. Cholesterol jumps on this bus, it goes from the liver out to the arterial peripheral tissue. And then the HDL bus, well, that goes from out in the peripheral arterial tissue back to the liver. Now, can you say the cholesterol that's in that bus going that direction is bad and the one coming to us is good? Of course not, it's just a bus. It's just a carrier, right? right what does LDL stand for? Li low density lipoprotein. Protein's the key word. So it's not low density cholesterol, it's low density lipoprotein. It's a protein carrier going this direction while the HDL goes back. Both are very important. And we can use ratios to see if they're out of balance. And essentially, when you combine these three together, that's how you get your total cholesterol. So triglycerides are primarily made once all of the carbohydrates go to the liver and the liver is saturated with carbohydrates, only about 65 grams, and the muscles hold about 250 to 300. Once those reservoirs for glucose are saturated, guess what happens? Our body kicks out a whole bunch of triglycerides, and our VLDL are the carriers for the triglycerides. We typically add up HDL, LDL, trigs for short, and VLDL, and that's how we get our, essentially, that's how we get our um, total cholesterol. So one ratio we can do, actually I forgot to mark this here, this is LDL-A, that's for coming up next, little sneak preview, but you're going to see here one great ratio to look at is total cholesterol. over HDL. That's a really important ratio there. Again, the literature, or I should say, um, most labs are gonna want you less than five. I like people right around 3.5. 3.5 is a pretty good place. So that means if your HDL is right around, I should say 50, that means your total cholesterol could go up to 180, 190. And again, it really depends, right? Another marker to look at is gonna be your HDL, the trig ratio. This, in my opinion, this way, is your most important marker. We'll go trigs, that's short for triglycerides, over HDL. And we like that, we like that less than two. So essentially, if, imagine if trigs were at 100, HDL should be at 50. Ideally, one to one, mine's right at one. It's at 50 and 50. So ideally, less than two is a pretty good place to be. And then less than, or right, right around 3.5, you could even go as high as four on the total cholesterol to HDL ratio, as long as your trigs to HDL are in check. So that's kind of your basic lipid panel. If you're just looking at total cholesterol, just adding one, two, three, four up, and saying, well, my number is 220, that means nothing. If your VLDLs are like 25, if your trigs are 180, and then your uh, HDL is 30, and the rest is LDL, that's not a good level right there, even though your total may not be too bad. You gotta look at the ratios. So next thing is, 
we have some more advanced panels here. One's called a VAP, a vertical auto profile done by a lab called Athrotech. Another one's called NMR. This is a different kind of um, profile that involves electrophoresis. So first off, the VAP test, this is looking at particle size. So you're gonna see we have particle size A and particle size B. Easy way to remember it if you watch part one is you want the A on the test, right? You want the A on the test, B stands for bad. So I'm gonna put a check mark, check mark next to the A, A is what we want. The A are the large fluffy buoyant ones that we talked about in part uh, one. We drew the video of how they can um, be bigger, they don't get caught up in the endothelial fissures and create inflammation or a foam cell. Where in part one we talked about the particle size B being really small and dense and being able to get into those endothelial fissures and create inflammation, not good. So we want less B and more A. And you'll see in the video coming up right after this, a patient's pre and post VAP test, and you can see their particle size significantly shift from B, which is the, the bad kind, to A, the good kind. So you can see that shift just in a few months on a paleo diet and also adrenal and nutrient support as well. But you can see here HDL, LDL, Triggs, we review that. Particle size, we want this guy here. That's gonna be on your VAP as well. And then you can see here we have HDLA and HDLB, right? So HDLA is basically part one, part two. HDLB is part three, part four. And it's the same thing. A is what we want. Again, HDL, that's not gonna be, I'm not too concerned. If we have this part, the LDL part taken care of, the HDL part kind of takes care of itself, right? If we have the LDL and the trig part taken care of, the VLDL takes care of itself. I'm not worried about the VLDL. As long as we keep the HDL and the trigs in check, and the LDL particle size in check, the VLDL will just follow suit. So you can see this is the HDL we want the most of, but that takes care of itself with everything else. And then a couple other things here. We have lipoprotein A. Now science literature says you want less than nine on that. That tends to be something that's static. I will give you the patient coming up in a sec. You're gonna see their pre and post. Their lipoprotein A did not change at all. It was four from pre and post but you can see their particle size and everything else changed and their metabolic syndrome pattern changed. That's more of a genetic kind of feature just based on my experience. And again, you will see um, things like apoprotein B. Apoprotein B is another marker that's typically in, um, reflective of particle size. Lower apoprotein B, the better LDL particle size A we have. Now we have another test called the NMR. So I, we did the VAP here. The NMR is looking at lipoprotein insulin resistance score, which is great. We want this right, I think less than 25 is where we want it, okay? And then also LDL number. So LDL number, we want less than 1,000. And then the LPIR score, less than 25. So again, LDL number is another way to look at LDLA. So nice low LDL number means we have a lot of good buoyant LDLA. So think of LDL number, low equals high amount of good LDLA, that's good. And then lipoprotein IR score, this is another lipid way to look at insulin resistance. Now we talked about the HDL, the trig and the HDL ratio being important for sugar and insulin resistance. If this guy here, if the trig to HDL ratio is good, if that's less than two, ideally closer to one, the lipoprotein insulin resistance score will always be good for the most part, for the most part. So you can get a lot just out of your standard lipid panel. So take a look at your old tests from your physical last year. And then if you wanna dig in deeper, get the VAP or get the NMR, get one or the other. Sometimes we'll do both people that are curious, but it's nice. We can get a lot of info here and really dig in deep. And I just want everyone's takeaway to understand wh what these lipoproteins are doing. And then in just a sec, I'm gonna put on screen here, a patient pre and post regarding their VAP tests and just changes that happen that, just, that are just amazing that you wouldn't see that, you know, you would, a, a conventional doctor would be shocked to see it with their typical cholesterol medication. Again, cholesterol meds, statins, if you will, don't touch the particle size. But you can see in this patient pre to post, we have an amazing shift in particle size. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Again, this is Dr. J signing off. Click on screen if you want more info. Enjoy the second half. Thanks, take care. Hey, it's Dr. J here. 
We're going to be reviewing a patient's VAP or vertical auto profile test. We're going to be reviewing pre and post test results. I'm going to be kind of walking you through my breakdown of it. Again, the first part of this video, we're going to be walking through what a standard lipid panel is and the key things you need to be running to get a sense if your cholesterol is out of sorts in a bad way. Again, so kind of giving you the wrap about cholesterol, if I already didn't do it in the first half, really is that is cholesterol bad if it's a little high? Well, we have to look at the ratios. We have to look at the quality of cholesterol. We have to look at inflammatory markers. We have to look at blood sugar markers. All of these are vitally important to get a sense of, you know, is your lipid panel in an area that may not be so good? Now, again, it's possible to have high cholesterol and have it be not good or have it be you know, disease promoting. So we have to kind of break it down. So here's a patient. Lab test was about six months ago. You can see their LDL cholesterol was 174, HDL in the low 40s. You can see the VLDL high. You can see the cholesterol above 250. You can see the trigs, the triglycerides way out of whack. You see that ratio, almost a five to one ratio, which almost always tells me insulin resistance and too much carbohydrate. Okay, we go down a little bit lower. You can see the LPA is okay. You can see HDL, right? The less protective versus the most, not a big deal there. Where you see the big problem here is look at the pattern A versus pattern B. We can see this patient is primarily pattern B. You wanna be A, so B equals bad, A is good. You want an A on your test. You want an A over a B on your test, right? So you can see this person had abnormal HDL to LDL ratio or an abnormal HDL to triglyceride ratio, which is important. And you can also see that their particle size is off. And then look, probable metabolic syndrome. Yes, this person had a fasting blood glucose of 115. So much, much higher on the blood sugar side. Now, just six months later, okay, this is the different test. Six months later, so here's the old test. Here's the new test. Just off the bat, we can go down, look at the particle size. The particle size is now particle size A, the large, fluffy, buoyant LDL. And then you can see also up here a little bit, look at the probable metabolic syndrome. Now it's negative, no probable metabolic syndrome. And then you can look above as well, look at the cholesterol, 186. This person's actually eating more animal protein than they've ever eaten, and their cholesterol is actually dropping. And that's because the amount of cholesterol you consume doesn't really have too much of an effect. I mean, you'll see people that whose cholesterol will go up from a no-fat diet to more fat and cholesterol, but a lot of people who are cutting a lot of the sugar and the insulin, so their insulin's dropping. That's a big stimulator of how your liver, the HMG CoA reductase enzyme, makes cholesterol. And also getting high-quality protein, that stimulates glucagon, and glucagon drops down that HMG as well. So insulin, if we drop insulin down and we raise glucagon, we're going to be reducing our internal production of cholesterol in a good way. Because if we're making cholesterol because we're on fire, because we're inflamed, that's definitely not a good situation. So you can look here, HDL, the trig ratio is better. I mean, it's at about, mm, I'd say just right around three where before was that five, so it's better. I like it less than two. So this person still has work. Their blood sugar is still a little bit above 100, but you can see, look, probable metabolic syndrome is negative, so they had significant improvement. Um, you can look at the ApoB. That's good, good place. LPA, that's fine. You can see the HDL could be a little higher, right? But it's still not, not terrible. The big things I want to highlight, look at the shift in cholesterol particle size totally in that A range. So this is what six months on a paleo diet, also fixing the adrenals, giving nutrients for blood sugar support. This person also has some infections too that we're resolving, but you can see the big things that improved. Look at total cholesterol drop. Look at the triglyceride dropping in half from 200 to 100. A look at the particle size shifting down below, and then look at the probable metabolic syndrome risk factor change. So a lot of good things shifted here. The first half of the video, we're going to break down your typical lipid panel. So feel free and take a look at part one and or the first half of the video series. Again, this is Dr. J here signing off. If you're having issues with your lipids or you're feeling inflamed or having hormonal issues, feel free and click on screen or click below so you can get access to me so we can take a step in the right direction and start healing. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.